thank you so much. So, chapter three, task analysis concepts. Now, this is, you could say, this is um, based on what my students and I developed. We call this GTA group, where task analysis, uh, and we found out that task analysis approaches and methods, all the ones I mentioned, and many, many more, all the time talk about these things. And, and, and these are the concepts we talk about. I call this the ontology of task worlds. And if you are ever discussing or reading or looking at an approach on user-centered task design, you will always find that it's about tasks, it's about agents, it's about roles, it's about objects, and it's about events. These are the five different concepts, concepts that you need and that are sufficient to describe any task world from the point of view of the different users and stakeholders. Yeah. So tasks are, are activities that could have a goal. So there's a relation between tasks and goals. There's a relation between basic and unit tasks, and there's actions. I will go to them in detail. I, I really want you to understand the concept in detail. And the same is for agents and roles which are related, and objects and events. So let me go into detail here. Tasks. Let me consider this a definition. Each task has a goal. A task is an activity and the goal is the stage to reach. I could go to a coffee shop. No, not in the Netherlands, not a coffee shop. In the Netherlands, <laughs> I could go to a cafe in order to buy coffee, right? In Italy, I go to a coffee shop to buy coffee. But in Amsterdam, it would be considered funny. So, anyhow, so I have a task, but I perform this task in order to reach a certain st state. I, I need to upgrade my caffeine level, right? Okay, so, uh, and the goal may be reached through several different tasks. I could actually ask somebody to get me a coffee. Or I could make one myself if I have the machine. Right? So, it's a definition. If it has not a goal, then I won't label it a task anymore. And by the way, this is just an agreement on, on words. If I use the word tasks, I mean an activity that is intended to reach a goal. Right? And, and some other uh, 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 authors sometimes use a different word to be aware. Right? So as long as in a task there's a something that is an activity and that is intended to reach a goal, then this is what I label a task. And the goal may be reached through several different tasks. So normally a task has a single goal, a state, and, but there are different ways to reach that. Okay? Good. Tasks can be many different levels. So for instance, I can have the task to write a book chapter, which will take me maybe a month or two months. In order to do that, I do many things, including, including check the spelling. Right? And check the spelling is something that could take me half a day for a chapter. And, and, and checking the spelling is a, lo a lot of work, but one of the things is to repair one misspelled word. word right? Sometimes I, I'm just doing a very simple task, but, but still this one has a goal. The goal is to get the word right. And here the goal is to get all the spelling right. And here the goal is to get the chapter published by the editor of the book. Right? Different levels of tasks. This one could take two months, could take half a day, this could take like one minute, or less. But, activities. We, I mean, I label activities a subtask that can be delegated or mandated to another agent. So, get me a cup of coffee, I can do it myself, uh, I can ask somebody, I can go to the shop and ask somebody, right? So the, and, and, and um, so a, a, a package of activity that I could hand over to another person or an institute or a machine, I label that one an activity. It's just a word. This is not completely identical with what, it, what activity theory, you might know about activity theory, do you? No? Okay. In human computer interaction, it's one of the theories. And, and uh, I mean, whatever word you use, there's a theory that uses the word in a different way. Sorry for that, right? So, just when I talk about it's a package of things I can ask somebody else or can ask a machine to do. So, but when I, oh, I did switch off my telephone, which is stupid, hopefully it won't ring. But normally, if, 
if I have a telephone, the, the, one of the activities is to handle the telephone, the incoming calls. I can do this myself. I can delegate it to the secretariat, by the way, which is an institute, it could be five people. I, I could delegate it to one person, or I could delegate it to a machine, an answering machine, right? So, and, and so this, I call this an activity. Now, authors might mandate or delegate spell checking to a human colleague. Actually, in, in Amsterdam, I have a colleague who is very good in, in spell checking English. He can do this, I think, as quick or quicker than Microsoft Word can do that. So I can ask him, could you do it? But I could also use Microsoft Word. Huh? So you can see it could be a human agent or a machine agent. Now, I talked about mandate and delegate. I am defining the words here, but if you go to the, to the, uh, the online dictionary, it's like Webster, you can find that. Mandate means that if I mandate an activity to somebody else or to an agent, it means that decisions and, of, and all detailed activities are left to the agent. So if I, I delegate handling my telephone for the week to the secretariat, I, I just tell them, do whatever you want. You know my agenda, and actually, uh, I leave it to you. But I could also delegate, and, and delegating means that I say, if this, then you should do that. And, and delegating means I specify what you should do. Right? Uh, and obviously, there's well, there, it's, it's, there's some kind of in-between here. Right? But, but it makes sense. Sometimes you really want to delegate, to mandate. You say, solve it for me, whatever. Way. And sometimes you say, no, you should do it this way. So only these people would get to slot in my agenda, and, 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 and for the whole Friday I want to, to have no points in my agenda, and, and if this person calls, please approach me, because the, 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 uh, I, I would like to talk to them immediately. So, so there's really a difference here. And, and in many cases you have to find out if, if, you, if, if you design a system. I mean, I'm aware in Microsoft Word, for instance, there's lots of things that, that seem to be mandated by default. So if, if, if I don't change the system, then, then whenever I hit a dot and a space, then the, then the machine will automatically put a, a capital for the next word. But you don't like it. So, so this is something mandated that I have to change, right? I have to withdraw mandation and say, I will tell you if you do. Right? And don't repair my spelling without asking. Okay. Another important concept and distinction is between primary and secondary tasks. A primary task is the task that I want to do myself. I, I'm interested in this task. It's generic for the domain. And, and a primary task is something that, whether there's technology or not, this is a primary task. Getting coffee five times a day is a primary task for me. Otherwise, I won't survive. Right? So this. So, so this is a primary, but a secondary task is to make sure that there's enough coffee pads in the office for, for my, my uh, Philips machine, whatever it's called, right? So th this is, and, and, and this is based on the fact that I have this machine in my office and the machine requires a special type of coffee pads with, with, uh, with an amount of caffeine that I could put in and so on. But, but, but this task is completely based on the fact that I'm using this tool. So I call this a secondary task. Now, if you are redesigning a system, you should be very careful to consider changing a primary task, to removing it or whatever. But, but changing a secondary task, why not? If, if you could have in each room of this building just a second tap where there would be coffee coming out of the tap, I would be completely happy. Right? So, so change the secondary tasks if it makes things better. But be careful about changing primary tasks. Okay? Now, what's a primary task? Easy, right? No. I remember, I'm old enough in my time in the office there was a secretary, and they would ask the secretary, what's, what are your tasks on Friday? And, and she said, on Friday, I have to, uh, to, for instance, to go to the post office and buy stamps and to go to the, to the, the, the station room room and, and get enough envelopes and letterhead of paper and put it down on my desk so that on Monday I can continue my work. And she considered this a primary task. And nowadays if I ask my secretary, what are you doing on Friday afternoon? She said, I check the mailboxes 
and, and I, I mark all the mails that should be answered and are not yet answered and immediately forward them to people with an urgent label and, and I destroy or, or delete mails that, that are no longer relevant and I store mails that I need to be answered but should be stored and so on. And she doesn't speak about stamps. So maybe she hasn't seen a stamp, right? Mm -hmm. So you see, so, so what, what is considered a primary task could be a considered a primary task today. But five years from now, or 50 years from now, it could be considered some old-fashioned thing that you only did because you were still communicating by mobile phones or smartphones. So, yeah. But isn't then your uh, secretary's primary task is to sort out the mail and the, the things you mentioned are subtasks? Well, it, it, it's a very interesting problem. And, um, I, I've been working on this with George Rakers from Philips Design a lot. And George Rakers, in the end, came up with the concept of a, a, a task model zero. And task model zero is modeling the tasks irrespective of any technology. Uh, which, by, by the way, is an illusion. You, you cannot go there, right? But, but you could try to find out by looking maybe at history or looking at different contexts. How do secretaries work in, 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 in the bush in Africa? Or how do secretaries work in the Chinese office? Right? Where, where the mail stamps don't exist at all, right? So, so you have to find out different occasions that are kind of unrelated before you find out what really are the primary tasks. I mean, 20 years ago or 40 years ago, nobody would consider deleting the task of buying stamps. Uh, and nowadays you say, well, as long as she can provide communication to the office, it's okay. So maybe providing communication or, or making sure the office is ready to communicate, that's the primary task of the secretary. But the secretary never was aware of that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's true, it, it, and, and it's complicated. You have to find out. So we need actually to find out sometimes a task model zero. Which means you have to step back. George Rakers always said, I'm stepping to the moon and I'm looking to it from the moon. Uh, and he says, looking to it from the moon, if even the primary tasks of in a, re in a car repair shop are the same as, as in, in an operating theater in a hospital. It's diagnosed, it's, it's repair, and it's maintenance. Right? Okay, well. But depending on, on the actual context, nobody is able to look at it that way. People cannot cannot step outside of their own context, and that's the problem. Yeah, so, okay. Uh, and then the next one, basic task and unit task. A user's unit task, that is kind of the atomic primary task. A unit task is the task that people are not able to split, at least not cognitively. People are not able to consider, to talk about details of that task. If I ask my secretary what she is doing during the day, then she tells me a lot of things, and one of the things is preparing documents to be signed, and then she has the document signed by her boss. And if I ask her, how do you have the document signed by your boss? Then she said, don't be silly, I have the document signed. And she cannot split. Okay. So, so we call this a unit task. Now actually, if I would be allowed to walk with my secretary for a couple of days and find out, I find out sometimes the boss is not there. And then depending on the type of document, she goes to somebody else, or actually she signs a document herself on behalf of. So in fact, there is even details, but she is not willing and not able to speak about it. She's not, not refusing to speak about it, but it doesn't make sense for her. Her knowledge is, I have the document signed by the boss. Uh, and in practice, you could find out that there are different ways to have this signed. Maybe right? people have electronic signatures, or she has a stamp with a signature, uh, whatever. Right? Now, on the other hand, a basic task is the simplest task that's available for delegation. Right? And the simplest task available for delegation is, is the task that the system, the machine, provides you to perform separately. If you are in, in Microsoft Word and you have been working on a document, at a certain moment you are done, and you could just close Microsoft Word. Yeah. And originally Microsoft Word would happily do that and smile and your document could be lost, or the latest version could be lost. Yeah. Now, Microsoft repaired that one. So they asked, are you sure? Would you like to check to, to save that one? 
And last night when I was working, I found out that, that there's other levels like my operating system. I shut down my laptop yesterday after I finished editing a document. And, but because I have been doing like four or five things at the same time, like answering emails and having a Skype call and so on. And, and then I said, I'm done, so I switched down the machine. And in the morning I found out that the last version of the document was not saved. Because the operating system just automatically closes all, all uh, running programs, including Microsoft Word, and it was lost. Yep. Stupid. Am I stupid? Is the system stupid? Is the system stupid? Yeah, I, I am. <laughs> I tell myself it's just the system, but... So, you, know, you see, this is the difference between a basic task. Many people, in fact, say, I, 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 I'm done editing. So I would like to stop editing, which means save the last, latest version and, and quit Microsoft Word. But for Microsoft, or for the operating system, these are separate basic tasks. Right? I can do one without the other. And, and well, people well should be aware, and, and as long as the system makes me aware, it's fine. And, and then the system asks me, are you sure? which is sometimes annoying, and on the other hand, it helps me not perform in basic tasks if my unit task effect is just a little bit different. Okay? Actions. An action has no goal. This is just my definition. There are things that have no goal of their own. Right? And the meaning depends on the task it's part of. For instance, when I'm using my laptop, I all the time are hitting the return key. I hit the return key, what could it mean? But sometimes it's being end of a command. If I'm using Unix or Linux, the return means end of command. If I'm in, in Excel, hitting the return key means go to the next uh, cell in, in the spreadsheet column. Um, and, and if I'm uh, in inserting text, hitting the return key means insert a return symbol into text. So hitting the return key could have different goals and different meanings, right? Now, hitting the return key, I won't label a task, but I label it an action. And because actions don't have their own intrinsic goals, actions are things you can actually change. If you don't want to have a return key anymore, you can have a pedal, and every time you step the pedal, it means the same thing, right? Or you could, you could shout to the machine, or you could wave to the machine, or whatever. Yeah? This was a long time.